Welcome to Explore Embedded. In this video, we will move ahead from the block diagram and see the architecture of the 8051 microcontroller. So what we'll try and do is uh, not simply uh, read the names of the blocks that are there uh, shown on the picture, but we'll try and understand how a program is written and then uh, it is executed by the microcontroller. And while doing that, we'll understand all the aspects of the architecture. So uh, possibly what you do is you start writing uh, a code for the microcontroller. So uh, it could be written, the code is usually written in C or assembly, uh, any of the languages. So what happens is this is converted uh, to a hex file by a compiler. So you will have a hex file uh, and the various formats that we'll discuss but uh, let's assume it's a, uh, a hex file is converted from the C or the assembly code that you write and, and this hex file is a bunch of opcodes, operation codes that we had discussed in the initial video and these are stored in the permanent storage memory or the ROM. So uh, what happens is you write uh, the C code on a computer and then you compile it, you generate a hex file and that is transferred to the microcontroller with the help of a programmer or uh, if the controller supports a bootloader then it is transferred uh, using the serial cable. So uh, this hex file is transferred uh, to the uh, flash memory or the ROM. Now, we have a couple of registers here and uh, let us start with the program counter. So whenever you write a C uh, or the code and generate a hex file, this hex file will uh, have a starting location. So let us assume that it starts at location 0, 0. Now the job of the program counter is to point at this location. So uh, it will start executing uh, the instructions uh, from this location onwards. So program counter at any point in time will be pointing to the next instruction that the CPU needs to execute. Now, uh, why we are doing this? Say there's an operation to add two numbers which are uh, say this is A and this is B, so registers A and B, so uh, there's two 8-bit numbers that needs to be added. So and the instruction will have a certain opcode and the two numbers that are added assume that they are in two registers. Now the opcode is stored in the memory while the registers are here. So before we do any kind of operation, uh, the opcode is temporarily stored in the RAM. and uh, it is then accessed by the CPU to execute the instructions. So uh, the registers A and B are temporary storage units which hold uh, the operands during executing of the instruction. So uh, we have discussed ALU in great length in the first video. So what it simply does is it takes uh, the inputs and does the operation specified, say addition for instance or moving uh, values in and out of register. So it does a whole lot of operations and the results of the, those operations are stored back again on the registers and to the uh, and you know they are uh, processed and the outputs can be seen on the I.O. port or they are stored back in some of the registers for accessing later. So it depends on the code we write. So the program status word uh, it, it shows a lot of status information uh, so about the flags and the other information we will see this in a little while so it basically shows uh, the results of the operations I mean uh, there are certain operations like carry uh, we generate carry auxiliary carry and all of the stuff and this is uh, just an indicator uh, of all the operations that are done on the ALU so now we have missed out the DPTR so what it does is uh, so if all the code that you've written resides in the internal memory of the flash memory, program counter points to it. But if there is something external, if an external memory is connected uh, to the microcontroller, uh, this TPTR, it, it points uh, to those particular memory locations. So I've already seen 
the function of RAM and we'll discuss it in, in just a while. And in the core 8051 controller, we have 128 bytes of RAM and this is about four, this is four kilobytes of um, ROM or the flash memory. Now you could see that the 128 bytes of memory is very less uh, when we see at modern controllers, but we'll look into detail as to uh, what these 128 bytes are made of. And there are obviously I.O. ports. So when we write some code to handle uh, some input op output operation, let's say uh, you need to control turn on and off a bulb. So how is that done? That is uh, done by writing a code um, and transferring it to the flash and then uh, the ALU executes it and sends a command to turn on on off the bulb which is connected to the IO port. Obviously we need some interfere, um, some interface circuit uh, to handle the current and all, all that stuff but basically this is how it works. So this is 8051 uh, architecture in detail. We'll discuss the internal RAM structure in the next video and we'll also see uh, the other units. So basically it's a very simple architecture to understand. So uh, thank you for watching.